So Linda Carroll Trotter is a Greek-born adoptee and the president of the Eftihia project. Born Eftihia Nulla in Stranoma, Nafpaktia, she, has adopted, she was adopted in 1958 as an infant from the municipal foundling's home of Athens by American parents. After finding her biological mother in Greece in 2017, Linda wanted to help other Greek-born adoptees find their biological families. With the help of like-minded friends, in 2019, she founded the Eftihia Project, a US-based nonprofit organization which assists and supports, free of charge, Greek-born adoptees searching for their roots and Greek families searching for their children lost to adoption. To date, the Eftihia Project has facilitated the reconnections of 11 adoptees with their biological families in Greece. Advocating on behalf of all Greek-born adoptees with the Greek government has led the fight for their birth and identity rights, especially their birthright to Greek citizenship. So, hello, Linda. Hello. Can you hear me now? I finally got myself unmuted and I got my video going. <laughs> we, you are great. You are great now. All right. <laughs> Welcome and thank, thank you. you. Thank you for being here. Well, thank you for, for having me. It's uh, great. I enjoyed the conference very much uh, last year. I was actually in Greece again last year when I when I watched the conference uh, those those couple of days, and we were under lockdown at the time, so I know you remember that. Uh, but we're, we're certainly grateful to be here and be able to talk about the Ethikia Project and about the Greek adoptees today. Great. I already introduced you, so you are ready to go. All right. Well, I'm going to I'm going to share my screen because cool. I have a, a PowerPoint uh, presentation. Let me get on my screen here. Um, my slideshow, start my show. Oh, there we go. Um, so um, I'm uh, pleased. We're so pleased to be here to be able to be at the conference with all of you guys today. And uh, to talk about um, the, the Greek-born adoptees, which have gotten a lot of attention lately um, in the press here in Greece uh, and all over uh, the world recently. Um, and uh, just a little bit of background about the Greek adoptions. Uh, the, the, main, the main group of Greek adoptees that, that uh, went abroad from Greece were in the 50s, the decades of the 50s and the 60s. Um, there were thousands of Greek adoptees who ended up in America, some in Holland. We've even had contact from adoptees who actually were adopted to, by Greek American, or I'm sorry, Greek, uh, Greek uh, born people uh, in South, uh, South Africa, in Sweden, in Australia. So we've had people contact us from all over, even Cyprus. Um, so it's, it's amazing. Uh, Greeks are everywhere and Greek adoptees are also everywhere. Um, and uh, today we wanted to give you a little bit uh, about uh, the Greek adoptees, about what the FTKIA project is and what we do. And um, we hope that this will help a lot of people, uh, adoptees, Greek families who are searching for lost uh, uh, children that were lost or presumably lost to adoption as well. So um, the FTKIA project, we are a 501c3 nonprofit organization. We're designated as a public charity and tax exempt by the IRS in America. Uh, we assist and support free of charge Greek born adoptees searching for their roots and Greek families searching for their lost children. Uh, a lot of these families are looking for children that they willingly or knowing or may have been coerced into giving up for adoption. And some of these families are also searching for children that were lost in what we typically call the dead baby scam. In other words, um, they were told after about three days, oh, the baby died. We're so sorry. Uh, they ask for the body of the baby. They're not given the body of the baby. Um, they say, oh, we've already buried it with other babies or we've, um, we've uh, put it in lime already, sorry. Uh, and then there's no birth certificate, no death certificate. However, after like 18 years for guys, sometimes the army comes calling with a letter for a baby that supposedly had died, but yet there must be no death certificate and somehow they wound up on the mail register for army service. So um, those families are, are, are coming forward in huge numbers now. Um, we never ask a Greek adoptee or a Greek family who has re uh, requested our assistance for money or donations of any kind. All of our help is free. Uh, we do this because um, many of us have been, I want to uh, 
try people have tried to take advantage of us by asking for money and then not doing things people here in Greece people in America and so we didn't want any adoptee to feel like they had to pay for something that we feel is their birthright to know about where they came from um, we provide guidance and advice and facilitate searches for and reunions with biological family as well as post reunion and ongoing support so we try to support adoptees through uh, the entire process and Greek families as well. Um, we have uh, a DNA kit distribution program that we started in uh, at the end of July in 2020. Um, and we distribute kits, for, DNA kits for free to families in Greece and to adoptees with financial need because um, our, big, our big push is to get more Greeks in Greece in the DNA pool because that will help all of us. Uh, and so uh, we started out, we bought 12 DNA kits ourselves for the first when, when we did our first 12. Uh, and then uh, people began to ask how they could help us. So we said, well, if you want to donate DNA kits. So they were donating DNA kits. Um, we've now done about 100 uh, DNA. Um, we've collected uh, DNA from 100 uh, people um, since we started last the end of last July. And uh, now uh, we're, we were pleased that um, there was an article in the Greek Reporter that came out a few months ago about our DNA uh, program because we drive all over Greece collecting DNA and visiting with these families um, to help them uh, when they ask us for help looking for an adoptee. And um, My Heritage DNA Company, uh, and I believe we have um, one of the genealogists from Daniel Horowitz is going to be talking also um, during the conference. Um, they contacted us, had seen what we had been doing. They didn't know anybody in Greece was doing this. And they we now have an official collaboration with MyHeritage and they're providing all kinds of support for us. And it's been a wonderful, wonderful thing. And we're so grateful to MyHeritage for that. Um, and then also we advocate, one of the biggest things we're doing right now, we advocate on behalf of all Greek born adoptees with the Greek government for the four major issues that we feel like uh, Greek adoptees are, are uh, most concerned about. Transparency from the government about our adoptions, unfettered access to our adoption orphanage and birth records, um, a collaborative DNA database for adoptees and their biological families. We've already started one basically, so we would like for the government of Greece to collaborate with us to help us to support that effort. And then the biggest thing right now on the table is Greek citizenship for all Greek born adoptees, because that's part of our birth and identity rights. We were born in Greece and it's extremely hurtful when, when uh, celebrities get Greek citizenship and some of them aren't Greek at all. And it's very hurtful to people who were actually born here and especially adoptees who only want what non-adopted people take for granted where they came from and their own birth, their own identity and where their roots are. Um, we have a fabulous board of directors, um, the people that uh, support us and, and help, uh, help all the efforts of the FTKIA project. Um, I'm uh, the founder and the president and I'm also the Greek family intake coordinator. I deal with all the Greek families that, that want to help from us, that request help to uh, want DNA tests or want to have their story posted on our Facebook page. Uh, Meryl Jenkins, uh, and I put, I put our names of what our, our, bio, uh, our birth names were. So mine was Estekia Nula. Um, and the Estekia project was named not because my name's Estekia, but because of what Estekia means, which it means happiness for those who don't know. So it's the happiness project. Um, and I'm uh, so I deal with the with the families. Uh, Merrill Jenkins, who is Mitsos Dimitrios, who came from the Patras Orphanage, and he's our treasurer. Maria Heckinger, who is Maria Bukalatu. Um, she's our secretary and also our the volunteer coordinator for our new volunteer program. And then Stephanie Pazoles, who was Penelope Odysseus. Um, and she's our adoptee intake coordinator. So a lot of you um, have people that are maybe watching may have been ta have talked to Stephanie at some point. Um, and um, especially adoptees. Um, and Stephanie's great with, uh, with DNA and gene genealogy and all of that sort of thing. She's good at that. And we have other people that help us too that are also really good at that. Meryl's great at spreadsheets. Maria is a great organizer and a, and a person with just a bubbly personality. So we have a good group and we're all, uh, the Maria, Meryl and Stephanie all came from the Patras Orphanage and I came from the Athens Municipal Orphanage. Um, what we aren't, and this is kind of important because um, we get a lot of requests from people for help, and it's really not in our in our purview. 
And so I just, you know, we're not a Facebook group. There's a lot of things that are Facebook groups. We're, we're a Facebook page. We're a nonprofit organization. We have a Facebook page. You, membership in a group of any kind isn't required to ask for our help or to attend any of our events. Um, it doesn't matter if you belong to some other Greek adoptee Facebook group or some other organization, you're welcome. We'll help anybody. Uh, if you're a Greek adoptee, a Greek family, or if you're just interested in our cause, all of you are welcome. And so we encourage you to follow our Facebook page and um, to visit our website for the latest news and updates. And our scope is limited to Greek born adoptees, to the Greek adoptees born in Greece who are either adopted abroad or remained in Greece. We still help those adoptees too. And Greek families searching for their children lost to adoption or presumably lost to adoption. Um, we get a lot of things like, you know, great grandpa migrated to America, went back to Greece. We lost track of him. Can you help me find him? And um, we're kind of like, no, we, that's not, that's a little out of our scope. Um, or I did a DNA test and I found out, oh, wow, I have Greek ancestry. Can you, I want to know about my unknown Greek relatives. Yeah, we don't do that either. Um, and then some people were, were born and adopted um, outside of Greece and they have found out, they just happened to find out with DNA that, gee, I'm half Greek. One of my parents must be Greek. So, um, and again, you know, we deal with Greek born adoptees and the Greek families. Um, for all those situations, though, we always suggest that everybody join the Greek genealogy groups on Facebook, um, Hellenic Genealogy Geek, Greek Ancestry and History, Hellenic Genealogy Resources, DNA Greek. There's a bunch of them out there. And uh, we encourage people to post their story there because especially if you're looking for lost relatives, uh, it's people on Hellenic Genealogy Geek and these other sites have been so incredibly helpful to people and to adoptees as well. Like they have uh, gone above and beyond in helping people find their biological family. And it's been an amazing thing to see all of these other groups help out. The other thing people can do is if you have a name and an approximate last location in Greece, you can actually contact the Hellenic Red Cross Tracing Service in Greece and make a request to have that person traced. And if they find that person or the family, they can give them your information. They can, you can, um, and they can uh, contact you then if they would like to have contact. Uh, it's our hope in the future, we might be able to expand our services to do that. But right now we just don't have the resources to do anything other than what our, the scope of our organization is. And we put a special emphasis on those adoptions that happened in the fifties and sixties, because as many of you know already, that many of those adoptions were not really above board. They were, uh, it was kind of a bitter and, and tragic history of Greece. And um, it's it's finally became, becoming acknowledged that we exist. So that's a cool thing that at least now they're starting to notice, the government's starting to take notice, the people of Greece are starting to take notice and a lot more people know about these adoptions. Um, we do, uh, as far as searching, because you know the title of our thing is uh, Search Reunion, uh, advocacy and education. We provide guidance, support, and advice to adoptees and biological families. Um, you know, we provide tools and resources for obtaining immigration files, your uh, orphanage court, birth records from Greece. Uh, we post adoptee and family stories on our Facebook page. Um, and we have a lot of connections with members of the news media here in Greece. And a lot of them pick up our stories off of our Facebook page. And lo and behold, they're on all these little uh, Greek news websites all over Greece. So um, we've had a lot of traction from a lot of, a lot of places here. And so that's been, since we're very visible here in Greece, it's been uh, to have that. We never post stories that we're not, that we haven't been given full permission to or pictures. Uh, the families and the adoptees have to give us explicit permission to post things or and if people don't want names mentioned or they don't they want to keep some things private we do our best to keep everything like that it's uh, it's all up to the family and to the adoptee as, as to what they want to post um, we also facilitate contact between adoptees and their biological families at some point we get enough clues to who we're looking for that we're able to approach families um, or adopt these on behalf of families. And, and in many cases, we uh, refer that to the agencies that do this. There were a lot of kids that came through the ISS, the International Social Service. And if we have uh, people that have uh, been through the International Social Service, we try to leave that to them to facilitate the contact because they do have ways to do that here in Greece. And the inter ISS has been extremely helpful to all of us. Plus they're now digitizing all of their records, which is great. And that's what the Greek government needs to do with our adoption records as well. They need to have them all digitized. Um, we provide the DNA kits, of course, free of charge to the Greek families and to the adoptees with need. 
Um, for reunions, um, we provide guidance and support and advice for that as well. Uh, those of us who have had been had reunions with family, and of course, I've lived off and on in Greece. I live about six months out of the year here, so I've really gotten immersed into the culture, into the mindset, and all of that. Um, we provide that kind of support um, because several of us, uh, Maria's reunited with her family as well. So we have, we try to give advice based on our experiences with our biological families because you're really uh, starting to come together with people that are that are virtual strangers and they don't speak your language. So it's, it's a, and the culture is completely different if you weren't raised in a Greek American household. And even then it's a little bit different as well. So you have to get used to that. And so some people get a little stressed over the differences and stuff. And we try to help in that regard to, to give them advice and support. If it's desired, we'll help facilitate the reunion, be present if we're, if it's requested, if they'd like for us to be there, I've been present for a couple of them. Um, and serve basically as the photographer and a little bit of a translator. My Greek's not that good, but I get the gist of everything. So, so it's not too bad. So um, I help a little bit in that regard and whatever the adoptee wants. Uh, people, adoptees have even stayed with me during their reunions and had a place to decompress in private because it's, it's, difficult. it's a very emotional um, situation when you, when you reunite with your family. Um, we provide post-reunion support um, for anything that they might need and ongoing support. Um, you know, they may need a little help with translation or a phone call or a video chat or something, or they need someone to speak Greek to one of their family because they can't find any English speaking members. Um, and we provide that support as long as people want it, but we encourage all adoptees to gradually become self-sufficient in their contacts and their interactions with their biological families. Cause at some point you have to, you know, you have to uh, cut the apron strings and, and fly on your own. So, um, we encourage everybody to become self-sufficient uh, eventually uh, and not depend on someone else because you may not have uh, the luxury of having somebody who speaks both languages to help you with translations and stuff all the time. Um, our big push right now is our advocacy and activism that we've been working on with, with on behalf of all Greek born adoptees. Um, and this is just basically our beliefs. We believe the knowledge of our roots and biological families are basic human rights of all adoptees. We believe we're entitled to transparency. We're entitled to our records. Um, we believe that all Greek born adoptees are entitled to Greek citizenship by birthright and that it should be expedited and it shouldn't cost us anything because we didn't ask to leave. We were, our fights were decided for us and we didn't have any say in it. So we shouldn't have to uh, spend huge amounts of money which some adoptees already have and have nothing. They still don't have their citizenship. Um, to, to get back what is ours by birthright. We all left here with Greek passports that said we were Greek and we were of the Greek nationality. We were born here. And that's, you know, wh what we believe. That proves right there we're Greek citizens. And actually in one of the meetings that uh, we had with the, with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, we met with uh, Deputy Minister Katsaniotis and Mr. Margaritis, who's the director of the diplomatic cabinet. They admitted that if we have those Greek passports, they agreed with me, we're Greek citizens. Now they're expired and all we have to do is figure out a way to prove that the person on the passport is us. But once you do that, that shouldn't be a problem and it should be something easy. They don't need to make this difficult for any of us. Um, and we believe that we're entitled to the establishment of the, by, of the database, a collaborative database where the Greek government actually helps us. So up to now, we've done a lot, I believe. We've worked really hard over the last year and a half trying to make it inroads with the government. We have the support of one of the members of parliament, Stathis Konstantinidis of Kozani. He's a member of the Greek parliament. He made a speech to Greek parliament where he talked about us and about our cause and how we should be citizens and that Greece owes it to us to make this right. Uh, and also he was helpful in the facilitation of the appointment with the, with the, the deputy minister of the, of the diaspora Greeks and the uh, minister of Katsaniotis. Um, we have received wonderful support from the Greek ambassador to the United States, uh, Madam Papadopoulou. Um, she facilitated an appointment with the Ministry of Labor and Social Affairs regarding our orphanage and birth records. And they, the, uh, the embassy in DC is still giving us uh, continuing and ongoing support um, whenever we need anything. Uh, they have asked to be kept abreast of everything that we're doing. Um, we did meet with the department head of orphanage and foster care 
in the Ministry of Labor and Social Affairs, and they are working on uh, and committed to working on a centralized streamlined process for adoptees to request and receive their orphanage records. Uh, we're still waiting on some more from that, and we should be meeting in the next couple of weeks again to see where we are in that process. Um, and of course, I just talked about the meeting with, uh, with uh, Deputy Minister Katsanyotis uh, and Mr. Margarithis, and we presented a formal statement to the Greek government of those four issues that we consider important, and we also offered proposed solutions to all of them, including the citizenship issue. Um, we have a, a petition on change.org called Justice for Greek Born Adoptees Now that we hope um, everybody will go to and sign for us. Um, and we address the petition, of course, to, to Prime Minister uh, Mitsotakis and to, uh, to, uh, to the Ministry of the Interior and those people that are responsible for citizenship. And we have some very high level government meetings coming up in the next couple of weeks. So stay tuned for some updates, follow our Facebook page or our website because we really feel like the ball is starting to roll and we think there's some good stuff coming very soon. So we're gonna keep everybody abreast of that. Um, we do education. Um, our, uh, our educational uh, things include, um, we have a thing called Greek Adoptee Conversations where um, we do Zoom, interactive Zoom meetings where the, the adoptees can actually uh, interrupt and talk and do things. We have, it's kind of guided, we have a subject um, and we have other people who aren't adoptees. Many members of Hellenic Genealogy Geek um, usually uh, come to our, to our meetings because they're, very, uh, they're in from Greek ancestry and history. They're very interested in what we're doing. They're very supportive. So they like to come and listen to what's going on. Um, so we talk about our ad, we've had three of those conversations so far. We do one about every two months. They last usually, we're slated to last a couple of hours. Most of the time they go into three hours because the adoptees want to still, or the families, whoever's present wants to stay around and talk. So we have, we talked, we had one on advocacy and activism with a little bit of the stuff we just talked about. We have, um, periodically Greek coffee hour, um, where we talk about, we have Greek adoptees talk about their stories or our Greek families. And that really fosters, gives, uh, fosters a sense of camaraderie and, and bonding because we all came from the same circumstances. I've often said that um, our stories are all different and yet they're all the same because we all came from the same background and the same type of circumstances here in Greece. So this really is an opportunity for people to talk about their situations, their adoptions, because some people's adoptions weren't pretty. They didn't have good parents. I was fortunate. I had wonderful parents. Not everybody did. And it's very sad to hear some of these stories. But it's also liberating for them to talk about this with other Greek adoptees who they feel a bond to. Um, we did one just the, our last one was, uh, which we did last weekend was a search for roots and reunion. And we talked about the tools we use to do that and how we facilitate that. We have a lot of forms that we provide to adoptees because sometimes they're hard to find online. Uh, so we kind of we give them that with instructions so it makes it easier to fill out forms if they want their immigration files, if they want us to try to retrieve records for them in Greece because we do have, we do have the ability to do that with a limited power of attorney form that we have. And so I, I make frequent trips to, to the GAK, the General Archives of the State, or some orphanage or, uh, orphanages or institutions to get records for people to bring them back to the States when I come back home. Uh, one of our other things we started doing with, uh, with the Alexandria Institute in Athens, which is actually where I take Greek lessons, um, they uh, have furnished us with a Greek word of the day. Uh, and so periodically each week we put out Greek words for people to learn because that's part of the, the educational aspect for adoptees. They haven't been exposed to their language and that's what we do. We want to help with that. We also have the FTKIA Project YouTube channel um, and all of, our, all of our events that we do, all of our sessions, our Greek adoptee conversations are all recorded and they're all there. Also, uh, the, the great documentary, The Lost Children of uh, Cold War Greece that was done by Sofia Papiwanu for Alpha TV uh, in April of 2019 is on there as well with English subtitles for the Greek portions. So if you go to the FTK Project YouTube channel, you can see that and a lot, there's other videos as well, uh, news videos. We run a lady Minagaki here in Greece. And so those are there as well as all the sessions that we've done and uh, the Greek uh, virtual Greek adoptee reunion we did this past August. Um, we have a lot of webinars and events, the My Heritage. Facebook Live event we just did recently. We were doing, uh, we, I was interviewed by Gregory on Greek ancestry last year. 
Um, we just, we're doing now the second International Greek Ancestry Conference, uh, and we have the first annual Greek adoptee reunion coming up August 5th and 6th in Nashville, Tennessee, which is the, known as the Athens of the South. And uh, it's, we also have the world's only uh, full-size replica of the Parthenon. So we have that. And, and uh, so we're, we thought that we thought this was a great place to start for that. And our second annual Greek adoptee reunion is gonna be in, in Greece. Uh, we'll, and we'll have the dates for that announced later, but uh, we're gonna have that actually here. And we hope to have then a lot of the Greek families to also uh, did. And this is just a reminder about the Greek annual the, our first annual Greek adoptee reunion, which we can't wait to see everybody there. We're excited about that. And um, if you for, uh, if you are you just dying to volunteer for something, we need we need help. We need search angels. We need DNA genealogy help, genealogy help. We can use translators. In, we need an intake coordinator for Greece and one for Canada, EU, and Australia. Uh, we need a, a DNA kit distribution program coordinator. We could use office staff in the USA and Greece. And so if you would love to volunteer, uh, shoot us an email. We'd love to hear from you. And last but not least, uh, this is just our contact information, our social media, and our, and our addresses um, in, in, um, in, in the US and in Greece. Um, so um, I've been, it's, it's been exciting to be here with you guys. Um, if um, you guys, Anybody that wants to, to know what we're up to, please like and follow the Facebook page, go to the website. Um, and if you would love to volunteer and help us, we would love to have you. We know there's lots of people uh, that's listening today that are great at genealogy and this DNA, family trees, whatever you can do would be greatly appreciated. Thank you very much, Linda. It's, it's great to see how your project something that was literally born out of you <laughs> and all your experience uh personal and in doing this it's great um one quick question you are here in greece now yes on another mission yes <laughs> how I'm, many how many people are you going to dna test i've already done 20 and i got more i actually have i had um and the last time i was in athens the week before last um, I had at least four people tell me they had COVID. So I was like, no, I'm not coming to your house. Um, and so um, I have some people that are now after two weeks have probably recovered. I can probably safely see them, but I have been, I've been to, uh, I've been to the Peloponnese. I've been to La uh, Comia. I've been to uh, Mistra. I've been to Athens. I've been to Larimna. I went to uh, um, Santi. I've been to wow. Kozani. I've been to Thessaloniki already. And I've already done that. Um, so it's like people are all over. It's amazing how many people have found out what we're doing with the DNA. And it's so important. And I was like, I want to just encourage everybody to do DNA because the more Greeks that do DNA, we're going to, we're going to have more adoptees find their families and right. get that closure and that sense of peace, because that's the most amazing thing. I mean, the greatest joy in my life has been founding my biological family and being able to be assimilated into the Greek culture. Like I have, it's just it's been a gift and it's been yeah. an amazing gift. And I'm just, I'm, I'm so happy to, I want to share that with everybody else. And I want other adoptees to feel that as well. 